Hello, good evening, welcome to the Scottish Rugby Podcast. It is myself, John Anderson, here in the hot seat tonight, uh, joined by a slightly poorly Craig Manson. How are you feeling, big man? I am feeling, uh, good evening all, it's lovely to be here, um, but I'm feeling like something that's been dragged through a dragged, horrible place and has been regurgitated back up into my seat ready for the podcast. So, uh, yeah, I'm not... uh, (laughs) Not particularly feeling great, but considering the other two have called off again, because even though I was I was really surprised that they weren't here to shout about how good Glasgow were on the weekend, um, yeah. they're not here. So, so that, this this is the problem with putting out the 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 detail of the podcast when you so you, you obviously we schedule this and then you put out the detail for the Hugh Dan fans page and all that, and it normally I try and list who's coming on. Uh, and tonight was a bit sketchy, so uh, yeah, we've got uh, officially got a crap call off, which we will come to uh, in due course yeah. through through the podcast. But uh, but yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm delighted you made it along anyway, Craig. And we'll uh, for for people listen, we are going to keep this quite a short one tonight. Uh, just I'm I'm not long after having had the man flu as well, so um, we we're, we're both in recovery mode here. So I think we'll just keep it nice and short and sweet and to the point. Um, for for tonight's podcast, which normally means we'll be two and a half hours deep, and uh, <laughs> Craig, Craig, Craig all passed out in his chair, with drooling very slightly down the bottom. <laughs> so, absolutely, uh, absolutely. <laughs> so that does mean tonight we are not going to do a Patreon exclusive uh, content tonight. We'll look to make that up to you in due course, guys. But if you do want to get access to all that 
exclusive content that we've done so far, head over to patreon.com slash Scottish Rugby Podcast, where you can subscribe, to support the podcast. Three pounds a month will get you access to everything on there. And uh, yeah, it's there's a lot of interesting stuff. Some of the early stuff is quite quirky. Uh, we've got some really hard-hitting stuff in there as well, uh, some interviews and things that have been done over the years. So there is some really good content. Plus, usually, when we're not, not uh, when we're not feeling uh, a wee bit ill, you would get access to our super secret hands in the rock uh, section, which uh, normally involves a bit of squeeries because it's behind the paywall. Um, but uh, tonight we will do hands in the rock tonight for the the masses as a wee treat, and you might even get a jingle out me. Who knows? Uh, oh, we'll I love a jingle. Oh, Nothing boy. brings a smile up my face more than a jingle. I'll tell you <laughs> so. Yeah, so and on on the on the subject of other things, you can also I'll just pop the wee ticker up there, and obviously people on audio, you'll not be able to see the ticker. But uh, yeah, we are we are obviously the Scottish Rugby Podcast to the Scottish Rugby Blog. So if you head over to the blog at any point, there's lots of good articles on there. The obviously the URC season has kicked off in earnest, and uh, we've got a couple of. Uh, people covering uh, Glasgow and Edinburgh there, which is really good to see and some interesting insights into the, the fortunes of the two sides, which I'm sure me and Craig will come to in due course. First of all, though, we are going to touch on a little bit of news that uh, Craig has just alerted me to, so hot <laughs> off the press. Uh, so the, the SRU uh, announced yesterday, the uh, at the I believe at the AGM, um, there was an announcement of the new um, new governance structure or the SRU Council Standing Committee on Governance Proposals. Um, this new structure involves creation of a company, uh, company limited by guarantee, which will consist of eight unpaid custodians uh, who will, by matter of law, be classified as directors. Uh, and they'll oversee the operating arm of the game uh, known as Scottish Rugby Limited, i.e. the current board of directors. So we... we there is a governance structure. This has obviously been a long time coming. And what we want to do, as per with every... Um, these things tend to come out, these AGMs, and then usually if, you're, if you've been with the podcast for a long time, you'll know that we tend to go a bit more in-depth into what that actually means for the clubs themselves at grassroots level, what it might mean for the pro game, what it might mean for finances, which, interestingly, this new governance structure also snuck through uh, just after the... Um, uh, announcement of the, the latest um, set of books the, for 2022 accounts, which uh, show SR, the SRU to be in rude health financially, as we have speculated a few times on here, Craig. Um, but uh, we, we we shall see how things continue with that. And so what, what we're going to propose we do uh, in true AGM's uh, format here, we're kind of making a proposal, Craig, you might have to second this. Um, we're going to Take that away for a later podcast and we will have a look in depth at what these proposals mean and what the financials are uh, for the SRU because obviously they've just come out yesterday and believe it or not, we also have jobs to get on with. So I have not consumed the detail of those announcements as yet. Well, I am. I have to have time to uh, get my grey slacks out of the uh, wardrobe, my blue blazer with its gold buttons on, and get ready for announcement of anything <laughs> to do with the SRU board and operating structure. So I will get my blazer on and become the old man that shouts at everyone. Absolutely lovely. Love it. Uh, that that sounds like a great character for you to play uh, in a future <laughs> podcast, Craig. I'm I'm super excited about that. Uh, speaking of financials, uh, and in the worst kept secret in rugby, um, down south, Worcester Warriors. Uh, now people go, Worcester Warriors, this is English Premiership. What does this have to do with Scottish rugby? Well, it's got a great deal to do with Scottish rugby, actually. Worcester Warriors have now been placed into administration uh, and have... have or are about to be, have been suspended from the league. Um, basically, free for all now. Players are, I believe, free to leave. Um, it's all, it's all still so muddy though. Um, so let's play a little bit of a um, pick, pick, pickings, Craig. Right, we'll take a turn about. Right, so which Worcester <laughs> Warriors player do you want to come back to Edinburgh or come to Edinburgh? Should I say? Well, it's going to be an interesting one. I, I saw a piece written uh, earlier on today, and it was saying that the, the, the players may 
still not be able to leave because the um, the company that owns the contracts for the for the uh, for Wooster Warriors um, uh, is not gone into administration, um, and so they aren't free to leave at this moment in time. So we will wait and see. Um, I uh, obviously uh, Gregor Townsend and the SRU are pretty desperate to make sure that um, both Suz and Duhan van der Merwe get game time so that they're ready for the Autumn Internationals and obviously therefore ready for the uh, the Six Nations. So they'll be doing everything I, I possibly think that to bring them to another to a club that they're going to get um you know some some good game time. Uh, and considering the the amount of rude health that uh, Scottish rugby have just announced that they're in, um they may be able to offer both the players, uh, and along with, if, if you're right in saying, we had a wee chat earlier on that Finn Smith might be on his way as well. So there's there's opportunities here, there and everywhere for, for both uh, Scottish clubs. So it should be good. I, I If I'm going to turn around and say anything, um, I would reckon I'd probably want to see Dewey back in, um, in Edinburgh, <laughs> mainly because uh, we, 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 we've got a, a, a fair bit of uh, depth in, um, uh, a prop at this moment in time. Uh, we didn't. We didn't when everyone was injured, but everyone seems to be coming out the other side of it. So we'll wait and see how that goes. I'm sure uh, Glasgow are. Yeah, uh... I, I can't imagine why you would really want a six foot four, six foot five, nineteen stone British and Irish lion uh, monster back <laughs> in the cup. I, I just, I just don't Isn't... understand it. I think maybe you everyone... want to just send it over <laughs> to us. Yeah, I mean, well, we, we, we are. We're a, a soft bunch over here. We will, you know, we'll, we'll take him under our wing and we'll, we'll we'll make him feel special. Don't worry about him. It's okay. I have to say, actually, talking, thinking about it, if I take out Edinburgh hat off, which is very, very difficult for me to do because it's pretty much welded on my head, um, <laughs> I would say you're probably going to get your biggest bang for buck for Doohan going to Glasgow rather than coming to Edinburgh. <laughs> Um, because I think uh, you know Glasgow, and although they 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 did a very very good job on the weekend, but um, uh, which we'll I'm sure we'll talk about. But I think that there's an opportunity to have someone fairly big on the wing um, that's uh, that, that that's do hand shape for Glasgow, um, whereas we've got quite a lot of. Um, I mean, back back three. Yeah, yeah, back three. You 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 needing some, needing a bit of a bolster, I think. Um, uh, so yeah. although I, I am seeing that Otla Fafita is still um, still playing for uh, Stirling Wolves, you know, so uh, I'm glad to see that that investment went well. Well, I think what we, what we could do, um, if everyone, so obviously SRU will be listening to this, so um, what we will propose to you just now, guys, and I think it's quite easy get this sorted for us. Um, if you want, Duhan can come back north and come to Glasgow. And what we'll do is we'll send Walter Fafita over to Edinburgh because he's a Me similar too. size. So it's kind of the, kind of the same thing. Right? I'm not having, just it. Have I'm not having it. No. I, I, I don't know what you're complaining about. It's pretty much the same thing. Like, you know, <laughs> I, I just don't, I don't see, I don't see the difference here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Craig in, uh, indicated as well. So obviously there is there is players. So Murray McCallum's down at Worcester as well. It'd be great to see him back in Scotland. He's been tearing up trees at the start of the season as well. Really good job, very yeah, yeah. good at tighthead. Uh, which I, you know I always get frustrated, and you, it'll come as no surprise to you. I don't like people moving positions so much. Uh, I'm I'm old like that, but especially in props, like the whole toing and froing between Lucy, Lucy and Tight. Money McCallum, he should be considered a tight head and left left his devices there and left to go on with things. And I think that's that you know hopefully that will be the the end of that that kind of debate uh, and we can kind of get on with that. And maybe that will also end the if he was to come to Glasgow, maybe that will end the uh, Ollie Kebble tight head debate as well. Yeah, yeah. I think also that what it, what it might bring up is also uh, give the uh, the Glasgow props um, uh, a little bit of competition that they'll actually start fighting a little bit more because you know I, I think that's one of the the biggest issues that they have at this moment in time is that there's not a lot of competition. So you know the 
not that I'm seeing the rest. Yeah, I'm seeing that they're resting on the laurels at times, you know. So, well, I mean, you've um, got a lot of injuries. So, at loose head, you've got injuries. That's that, you know, Al- Alan Dell's out for a, a period of time. You've got yeah. uh, Jamie Batty's, Batty's out as well. Uh, Oli Kelly's <coughs> injury, injury prone. Uh, you know, so there, there's there's opportunities at loose head, certainly, and that's where maybe a Rory Sutherland would be very welcome at Glasgow. Yeah, um, absolutely. At tight head, though, it's actually just as bad at tight head because obviously we've got this boy in the, the short term contract, Sordoni. You've got Xander Fagerson. Simon Bergen is apparently, if you so, if you happen to listen to the Glasgow Warriors podcast, which if you haven't done so so far, do not do it unless you have insomnia and you want something to put you, put you down for hours. It is utterly just. Ugh. <coughs> Just bleh. anyway, we'll come on to that later. Um, if all I've discovered from it is Simon Bergen makes really good coffee, and I'm pretty sure that's all he's done at Glasgow for the last two years. So, Seems to be. you know, like you've got an international, let's, wait, let's call him an international tight head. He has played internationally, whether he yeah. is international quality or not is up for debate, but that's fine. Um, yeah, he seems to have done nothing. So, and in a World Cup year, tight heads, props in general, forwards, you're wanting to manage their game time. You're going to have to manage their game time. And if you've only got yeah. Xander Fagerson in some, you know, short-term contract kicking about, what in a bad bother? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, give, it, give us so I think, give, I think, uh, basically all the players. I think, yeah, exactly. I, I knew that was coming. Um, uh, typical Glasgow bias. No, um, uh, I, think, I think you'll probably find that you'll probably find that Suz will end up uh, if he doesn't go to Bath, because I know that um, Bath has Bath been touted because yeah. uh, because um, Ben O'Bano has been uh, badly injured with his knee, so yeah, um, uh, right. so that uh, if he wants to stay down in that that area, because Worcester's not that far from Bath, so no. um, you know he could it would be an easy move for him. But uh, if he's um, uh, if he is coming back up to up to Scotland, then I think Glasgow is probably um, the better move for him. Um, and he, uh, even though I, I don't like to, I wouldn't like to, you know, you don't like to see your your ex girlfriend wearing someone else's shirt. You know what I mean? Um, so we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. But I would say, what well, I would say, I'd take this opportunity. I know that we're we're having a wee joke and and we're having and we're picking over the remnants. But I would say I would like to stand with the the Worcester Warriors fans and also Absolutely. the uh, the staff that have that have done uh, who, who don't deserve what they're going through. Um, and uh, I really we all stand with you and uh, and, and hope that uh, they're not going to be picked apart and then left alone. I, think. I hope they're back into the Premiership as quick as they possibly can. Absolutely. Completely agree with that. That's, you know, as you said, we, we laugh and joke about these things and you know, it's professional sport, so you always kind of pick over the opportunities that exist, but ultimately this is people's livelihoods and it's not acceptable that people are going without wages and are their jobs are under threat because of potential mismanagement of, of finances and things. So, yeah, we yeah. completely stand with them and uh, hope, as you rightly say, that um, things work out and they, they're back playing rugby. Rugby at a fantastic level as well. I watched their game uh, at the weekend um, mm. and they were ch- they were absolutely sublime. Sublime. Yeah, it they were playing very, very well. Mind. Very, very well. So, yeah. yeah um, so, well, we'll see what happens with that. And as you said, you know, um, the final the final piece of news that I'll touch on, actually, because it kind of links, I wasn't going to mention it, but it kind of oh, links to what you've said, actually. Um, there was an interview in the Times uh, over the last week or so. Finn Russell uh, has come out and he spoke very eloquently about life in Paris and, um, you know, future plans and, uh, his career and what have you, and uh, becoming a father. He's about to become a father and how this is mellowed him. And he, he speaks with the typical Finn Russell candor that you would expect. Um, but there's a really interesting line in there that he, he says, when asked about possibly moving back to Scotland, he says, well, uh, the SRU obviously now have the budget. Uh, you know, He says something like, oh, they now have an extra three and a half million in their budgets to compete with the French and English teams, uh, not that any of the boys have seen any of this. And it was such <laughs> a brutal line. I was like, 
I think Finn. I think Finn is looking for more appearance fees. Uh, yes, perhaps, perhaps. <laughs> or, or or Finn's quite happy that he, he's maybe not going to be returning to the sunny climes of uh, Glasgow and Edinburgh any time soon. Uh, yeah, his yeah. contract's up at the end of the year, and Racing have been linked with every fly half in the world ever. Because you know, when you've got a good thing, why would you buy a better thing? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that works out. But yeah, Finn, Finn being very Finn. Interestingly, he did say that he's. Uh, he says, "I've got four or five years left in Scotland jersey." Yeah, which makes makes it makes it sound like he might not retire after the World Cup when we get punted out in the group stages. Yeah, it'll be an interesting one. I, I I don't really. I'm not that desperate to see him go, um, and and to retire. I think if he if he's got the ability and he's and, he, and he's continuing on, what 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 the issue is is uh, is his competition and 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 whether they'll be given a fair shot um, uh, to go up against them. Now, obviously. Within Racing, and we'll, we'll wait and see what changes next season because uh, Stuart Lancaster's obviously been um, Lancaster's uh, obviously been heading over there. Yep, heading over there and see how whether he puts shackles on Finn or not. But the, the, he has been with the late, with the current uh, coaching staff that they have down there. He's been pretty much given his head, and he can do whatever he wants. Um, and uh, and and that that obviously relax him because we don't get to see the full Ben Russell in a Scotland shirt because no, he's, there, there's, there are certain um, shackles put on him uh, of what he can do and how he should play. So uh, it'll be interesting to see, um, uh, you know, if if he get, well, first of all, if, if God, we could open up a real what, a can of worms here and start talking about lots of things, but whether um, the current Scotland staff stay um, and see see if, if if you know how he fares with that, and if he if the, if, the, if the the current Scottish coaching staff leave or are, are punted and somebody else comes in, it'll be interesting to hear how Finn Russell reacts and works with that that staff. You know, it'll be interesting. I, I genuinely, I think I think Finn Russell will do really really well under Franco Smith. Uh, I think I think he'll really suit <laughs> Franco Smith. <laughs> No. <laughs> I am obviously only joking. Do not at me. I don't care. <laughs> so, speaking of unshackled, uh, wonderful rugby, let's go to the URC this weekend. Let's start down in South Africa, however, where Edinburgh were up against the Bulls. Um, relatively, I mean... A relatively strong Bulls side, let's be fair. Um, 33-31 to the Bulls. Edinburgh had chances to win it as well. Would have been a famous victory. What a performance from Edinburgh, though. Like, just unbelievable commitment. Just, I was so impressed. Yes. um, It's the, the, the ability to score tries and take their chances. Um, and not be bullied on the field. My issue is that is the is the first half warm up that they seem to take on a regular yeah. basis. Um, and you know they did it against uh, Dragons uh, the week bef- uh, the week before or two weeks before. Um, and if 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 we'd actually been well, I I, I know where I stand. It's, it's it's difficult. Sorry, I'm not I'm not being very um, what's the word? Uh, very. I'm not coming down the line. Uh, 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 what's the word? I'm not very structured tonight. I apologise. Um, uh, cold medicine really helps you just drift through this <laughs> this podcast really easily. Maybe some it's of the high, high on Calpol. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe yeah the Calpol. Well, I, I, I was uh, Alan McDonald hasn't actually come back to me to tell me what dosage I should be using. Oh, you know? oh, I think I think he pinged Cami. You need to ask Cami. Cami a bottle, knows, and, a, I think, a bottle I, and a half has uh, has worked quite well. It's, uh, it's uh, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think you can consume quite a lot of Calpol. Um, okay, right. Alan McDonald seemed to suggest, but yes, nice please. Uh, no, so, so anyway, I, to get back to it, what I mean is, I, I'm disap- I'm impressed with what they did to get themselves out of a hole, but I'm disappointed with with how think uh, things are, are are becoming apparent. We. we we, you know, we we've got a lack of kicker at this moment in time, and everyone's having a go at it. But the problem is, if Mark Bennett had slotted that kick, we wouldn't have had the Darcy Graham try. 
So we would have been behind anyway. Um, and so it's 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 a real yeah. um these are the games that if we want to if we want to do what I asked them to do, and that is win the ERC, these are the games we, we need to be winning. Um and so yeah. I I I'm maybe not a lot drinking the Kool-Aid as much as, as other Edinburgh fans are saying that that the, the, the they're incredibly happy with the performance. Yeah, the performance was very, very good in the second half. Um, the first half was a bit slow to start. And if we'd if we'd started the way we finished, we should have won that game. Yeah. Do you think there's an element of of the so obviously people people have reacted. I, I so I I agree with you to an extent. The outcome isn't what you want, and you, you so obviously I've spoken at length about Glasgow and the the expectation the expectation levels in year two for for this project. You guys, you need to be you do need to be demanding more and and plucky losses to good sides, but good sides who are depleted. Yeah. Uh, you know, these are the these are the chances that you've been given, and we've talked about the fixture list as well, and how it you know the, the start of the season has been relatively kind. I'm not going to over egg that one. It's been relatively kind, and that the the team isn't full strength. For for me, there is there is an element of. Do you think that people just see see the name, like they see Bills v Edinburgh, right, and the casual fan sees that and goes. Oh, they're away from home. They're within two points. They've scored thirty-one points. <clears throat> Darcy Graham's run riot. That that's an amazing performance. They must have done really, really well. Yeah, and I'm not trying to take away from that. I, I'm I'm very happy with the performance that they've given, especially considering I've been a fan of Edinburgh when, uh, um, you know, for for several years now, for many years now, where we've been. <laughs> You know, if we won, we're ecstatic, and would you know if we won one game in the season, we're ecstatic. You know, so obviously, um, the, the performance, the work rate, the the ability of the players, the squad that Edinburgh have built and Mike Blair has built, everything is is in, you know I'm very very happy about it. The problem I have is that if you look at the squad we've built, we look at the the, the what Mike Blair's putting together, the quality of the coaching staff, to win by a couple of point to lose by a couple of points because really we've not kicked very well. That's where I'm a little bit more um that's where my disappointment comes from because these are the games that we should absolutely um uh we should absolutely win. We we're also there's a couple of comments on the on the page as well currently and and, and our defence at times, looks it's almost like, like yeah, we're going to score more than you rather than actually defending. But our defence has been good at times, so it's it's a really yeah. it, it depends which Edinburgh turns up, and that sounds like us talking about France or uh, an Italian team, you know. I and and I think there's an element as well of that that's to be expected. Like we're being we're being pretty hypercritical of the teams because we do we expect a lot from them and. If you're saying at the start of a season, your defensive structures are maybe not in place, you're maybe you're maybe not quite as up to speed defensively as you want to be. You're heading away to South Africa, which is a massive challenge in itself, anyway. Yeah, yeah, you've conceded a lot of points, right? That you know what I think Edinburgh's defense is more than okay, and <coughs> you will have games where you concede lots of, lots of points. And speaking as a uh, having been a Glasgow fan during the um, the We Will Score More Than You era, um, it's very exciting. It's great fun, but you do want them to tighten up a wee bit. And um, I, I, I think Edinburgh will be absolutely fine. I don't. Loads of teams will go to the Bulls this year and concede more than 33 points. Put it that way. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah and, uh, the Bulls are a good oh, side. A good yeah, side. yeah. And, and that was a good Bulls side. It may not have had all the, yeah. you know, the the, the, the spring box in it, but it, it was a good a good Bulls side, and they were they were a strong side. So I, I I may be sounding a little bit ungrateful here, and I'm not trying to sound ungrateful. I, I think the boys have done a great job. Um, I'm really excited about the season. I'm really enjoying going and watching Edinburgh, and I really love the rugby they're playing. And I'll tell you what, and I'll say it again, I said it last week, Darcy Graham was world class. And I was just about to come on to Darcy for you. Yep. 
you yeah. know. Um, so we've we've got a group, and 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 Savala's starting to come on, um, and I really, I really do believe that 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 Edinburgh can do something better this year than they did last year. Um, I just I get frustrated when we we don't take the opportunities that we that we can take, and that is the main thing for me is the fact that we've got from what I can see three or four people we can kick with in the team, and we still can't score. We can, you know we're still you know taking penalties and missing them, um, and not converting all the tries etc. So it is difficult. We miss Boff, uh, although he's back in Edinburgh, so I'm uh, I'm happy here. He's back yeah, in Edinburgh. Got it. So. You've got him back in the capital, so that's a start. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I know. I mean, the kicker thing is uh, the kicker thing's such a challenge for you because, as you right, so I don't, I don't necessarily understand the lack of kicker because yeah. it's a skill that people can practice, right? You you can you and yes, it, there's a talent to it, and you're either a brilliant kicker or you're not a brilliant kicker. Fine, right? But you've got personnel there who have goal kicked. And you have access to a kicking coach. Chris Patterson seems to spend most of his time over your way. So I'm sure you could ask him nicely, how do I kick that ball or those posts? Get one of your props to do it if it's such a challenge. But it just strikes me. It's, it's an individualistic skill that shouldn't, it doesn't require anything additional. It just requires a bag of balls and some posts. And you kick. And you kick till you're good at it. I, I, it's it's strange. It's really strange, and you know, as I said, I mean, everyone's had a shot at it now. Like, I think he's are about yeah. to start getting the back row to start knocking them over. Like, yeah, and I think I think that's it. We, we were unlucky, obviously. Blair uh, didn't uh, didn't take part in the game because of an overnight illness. Uh, Yako's yeah, yeah. uh, Yako's um, injured. Um, and and Mark Bennett has kind of come along and, and and said he'll kick, and he's. And he's for me, he's he's doing an okay job for for someone who is never, never on the on the professional circuit, being pointed at and said he's the kicker. Um, yeah, so he's, he's never he's been always, a consistent goal kicker. No, absolutely not. Um, and and God forbid that we bring back uh, uh, Dunkey Weir uh, just because we need a kicker. Please no. So it's uh, <laughs> it's, it's it's one of those situations where I'm happy with where we are. I just. Feel that if we're if I'm going to point at any weakness, and I think everybody sees it, um, and and I don't think the uh, I don't think the, um, the the defense is particularly something we need to point at. I think it's more the kicking. If we're going to be a more rounded team, yeah. uh, we need to sort this kicking out because we can't yeah. just rely on Buffelli all the time. Yeah, exactly, <coughs> Buffelli goes down down with an injury, and then you're without a goal kicker going into the the heavy months where you might find you know grinding out a result. You know, night nine six with your goal kicking and in in a gale in Galway or some nonsense like that. You know, teams have to do it, and you ha- you have to have a, a reliable goal kicker to be able to kind of progress and 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 be at the top of these leagues. So I think you're absolutely spot on to call that out. It's a it's a good shout. So speaking of random goal kickers as well, so obviously you know Ed, Ed, Edinburgh. Have, well, Oof, I'm just keep I'm keeping a wee eye in time because we're going to squeeze everything we can out of this like yeah. a like a, an orange that we're we're crushing the juice out of. We're going to squeeze everything we can out of this hour. Um, Ed, Edinburgh, but not, I mean a losing bo- two losing bo- bonus points actually. Sorry, so we come away with two points for that game. That's not not a bad result, and I'm sure if you were offered that before the game, you would have taken that. Yeah, I, th- I think it's one. Of, well, it's difficult. I, I I'm one of those people that I've just I've decided this year that Edinburgh are going to take on all comers. So, uh, I'm, ah, uh, you know, so maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm a little bit uh, of a sour orange to be squeezed today. Um, but uh, you know, <laughs> I I I would I would like I, I would I personally felt that we we're going down there. We we're going to at least win one off the, the two the two games. Yeah. So you know they've got their chance this weekend. But but yeah, this weekend, I, I, yep. Um, I would I would say that yeah. Um, you know. Losing, taking two two uh, bonus points out of South, uh, one South African game is okay, uh, and I'm, and I think there's a lot of people quite happy about it. I think that's absolutely fair. So this weekend for the bowl, <coughs> I was going to wear my I was going to wear my Stormer shirt, Craig, but I chose not to. Uh, so you've got the Stormers away. One o'clock yes. kickoff on Saturday, so that'll be a that'll, that'll be a I think that'll be a cracking match. 
obviously the Stormers play lovely rugby as well. So I think he's like I think he's got a chance, first of all. Yeah. Uh, and I think that'll be a really good match to watch. Yeah, absolutely. But again, I'll go back to my point that I've made uh, before. Um, is is that I I believe, and I really do believe this that Edinburgh can take on any team in the URC and come away with a win if they if they if they do their job correctly. I think I think Mike Blair is an exciting coach who is getting people to play for him and for the shirt far better than a lot of other coaches. So you know I, I'm yeah. I'm I, I don't go into any game thinking that we're that 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 will be lucky to come away with a, a, a win. I actually want them to win and expect them to win. But I will say, Stormers are a fantastic team. They're champions uh, from last year. So, uh, yeah, it'll be a really interesting game. I'm looking forward to it. It'll be good to see. It's, it's great to have these matches where you get to baseline yourself against the against <coughs> great teams and see where you where you truly are. And if you can compete, that'll be, be amazing. I'll certainly be tuning in for that one. Yeah. Uh, so I, I kind of prematurely said, uh, speaking of random goal kickers, but uh, let's let's move over the way, um, over to Glasgow, uh, where a George Horn inspired Glasgow, uh, George uh, kicking the goals and generally just being the George Horn we know and love. Um, Glasgow took on Cardiff. Um, at Scotston on uh, on Friday night. Friday night lights were back and back with a bang. Eight tries for Glasgow, uh, three tries for Cardiff, and it was it was very very exciting stuff. Um, Cardiff. So, I think first of all, from a Glasgow perspective, Glasgow started poorly, as as they have done. Uh, dropped dropped quite a lot of ball, failed to convert a couple of chances in the red zone, as it has been. You know, it was kind of like watching last week's game all over again. And then Cardiff scored and Glasgow just absolutely blew them off the park from that point. Yeah. It was ah, it was brilliant. And ah, yeah, George Horn was just outstanding, Craig. I, I'm over the over the moon for George. Um I really am. Uh we've been you know, it's not it's not um uh, it's not a um, a secret that this podcast uh, uh, have have really fully backed George Horn and 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 have been really disappointed that he's not been getting the game time that he deserves, and that showed uh, on on Friday night he came out the blocks he's he's had a couple of shaky starts and then all of a sudden he comes out and and really showed why he's starting ahead of uh, ahead of Ali Price. Um, it was, you know, obviously Ali's been been rested and things like that as well. But he really, he, he's, he, I'm very, very having a having someone at nine who's that energetic, that that has that higher work rate, that higher skill set, and also is able to kick the goals. He's he's had a fantastic night. It was it was a fa- it was a fantastic night, and he even he even went full Nico Matalawu on it. And uh, ended ended up on the wing as well uh, for the for the last twenty minutes, which uh, great great to see his skill set being utilised all across the park. Uh, it was very very interesting. Now there was a couple. So so Glasgow obviously ran ran out fairly comfortable, very comfortable winners. Some amazing tries. Um, looked like Glasgow old individual performances from Richie Gray was as good as I've seen him in the last. Ten years, um, he was he was unbelievable. Um, other guys like Tupelo too. We we absolutely sh- slammed him last week after yep. his his performance. He was back on form, bursting tackles. Glasgow did benefit from a lot of really weird refereeing decisions, though. Um, oh yeah, yeah, and and that, that's a point I was going to make. But just just to go back to 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 Sione, um to a Pilotto, um what I will say is that when the te- when the players around him seem to be playing well, that's when he plays well. It seems to be if there's a problem or there's or the players around him aren't playing well, that's where. And I don't know if it's a trying to look, I'll do it myself sort of thing, yeah. or or what it is. But he, he the the players around him made made him on on uh, and I'm not saying he's, he's bad I'm just saying that he's he, he raised his game or or at least the players around him raised theirs to make him to give him the ball that he needed um but yeah the, yeah I think the, having con- confident players around him he, he, he's able to get a bit more time in the <clears> ball and he, his his point of difference is that that ball carrying in, in the channel 
and being able to actually break tackles. And he's only able to do that if you're get if first of all, if you're going forward. A second, you've got confidence inside and outside to be able to do that. So, um, yeah, I, th- I think that's a very valid point that he does look better, as as most players do. But yeah. he especially does look better when, uh, when when the team are playing well. But yeah, we'll come back on to the refereeing uh, decisions just now. Um, couple of contentious tries awarded for Glasgow. Um, I I will be honest. I called both of them as no try. Um, and was also sat with a referee at the time who called them both as no try and then was very confused with the explanations given for the, yes. for the tries. Bit strange. In this era of TMO that we're still getting these wrong. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's... I, I was... Tries are tries, and and sometimes if they you play the referee, and and if they yeah. and if the tries are given, the tries are given, and that's the way it is. Play the whistle. My issue was the red card, um, because well, yes, we'll just come on to that. Yes, uh, yeah. The, so, the, the, so yeah, as as you say, the, 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 the you know the tries are the tries are one of those things. Glasgow got the got the the uh, the rubber the green on that one, and they've been on the other side of it. So I can't um I can't I'm not going to sit and die on that hill and say that. It's no. ridiculous, but I think um, uh, I think there was one very contentious uh, referee decision that, that I don't think I thought was very wrong. Yeah. So, what? Anyone who's not seen the game, what we're talking about? So, Tom, uh, Tom Jordan, um, playing playing second second game for Glasgow at ten, who had a very poor first half, made a number of mistakes, um, had a had an incident thirty third minute where. Uh, has went really, really high on the Cardiff player and it is shoulder to head. Now, for me, like the commentary team thought it was red. For me, it was a red all day. Um, yeah. And what what has happened is the referees then, he said, clear foul play, contact to head. However, I think there's mitigation. And he said, there's a second tackler. That's dubious because there's no... Yeah. And he's changed height and he's changed direction. The problem for me with with the visual of it is Tom Jordan has accelerated into the tackle as you do when you're like he's been run over the top of three times already at this point in the game. He's not clearly a defensive ten. Let's be fair. Yeah. But what he's done is he's accelerated. He's accelerated his body in and he's almost jumped like he's literally like left his feet to go and make the shot and he's pushed his shoulder up towards the person's face it's it's mindless stuff it's really 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 poor technique for a start but for me it's completely dangerous and <coughs> it's shocking that there's there's another one in the second half where there's a contact with Fraser Brown as well and uh, the commentators then take the opposite approach and say it's a seatbelt tackle when actually there is a shoulder contacting with the head Go. Again, if we're see- if we're serious about this, that for me, Tom Jordan, that's a red card <clears> probably six weeks on the sidelines because he's for me clearly went in to make that hit and he's smashed the guy in the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I agree. Um, I, I'm not so. Much, I, I think he would probably six weeks reduced down to down to three or three or four because he's, he's it's his first offence or something like that, and he's got biscuits. biscuits. Like, yeah, he's got good biscuits. And he does <laughs> charitable work like Owen Farrell, but. Um, <laughs> But I think uh, it's difficult because I've got to say the the weekend was kind of littered with many different. Um, I it felt was. the the referee uh, in the Edinburgh game was pretty poor as well, um, and then the referee again um, uh, in uh, the Exeter Chiefs game uh, with Harlequins oh. <laughs> um, had an absolute howler as well. So, uh, yep. But, yep. but what gets me is the fact that they explain it. And yet everyone looks at it and goes, "Did you not watch what we've just watched? Um, <laughs> Have you not seen this?" What yeah, so, so so uh, you know, it, it's one of those situations where, uh, um, it, as I say, I've always said, "Play the whistle," and and you're and you're going to get you're, you're going to get the rub of the green with the referee, and you're going to get um, bad decisions with the referee as well, and uh, that go against you. So I guess it all balances itself out. But the problem you have is that. 
when it comes to head contact, and we've all been talking about it for forever in a day about head contact, you have to be stronger with this. Yep. Um, you know, it's almost like they're looking for mitigation now, and they're looking to make not make it up because they're professional referees, and I don't don't mean that the wrong way, but they're, they're they're looking for mitigation to keep the people on the field. So what I'm, I'm just going to see if I can find this as as we <coughs> there was actually a really interesting um, there was a really interesting interview done just after the game where one of the uh, URC officials actually not the referees the the um, management actually spoke about the refereeing directives that have been issued this year um, and World Rugby ha- World Rugby has said to referees to be more judicious regard so shoulder to head is no longer just red and, and, yeah. and mitigation you're absolutely right they are looking for more mitigation they are looking for more ways to make sure that players stay on the park and I, I, again it's like <laughs> it's like an element of what 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 are you doing you know another three three irish rugby players have come out today saying they're joining you know they're 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 suing the IRF, IRFU. You've got a massive class action suit sitting against uh, World Rugby at the moment for failure to failure to take these things seriously, and yet they're encouraging people to manage something differently. We were, st- I I I genuinely believe we were starting to see some progress with yeah. those things. You couldn't you couldn't go high. You couldn't do those things. And people were starting to learn, and this is just going to—it's going to say <coughs> yeah again. Um, it's absolutely madness, and the fact that it hasn't been cited is baffling to me. Yeah, yeah, I—that's—that's I, I, that's the, the you know we had a question about that as well. Will it not be reviewed? Yeah. Well, it, it hasn't. It's, it's, it's you know we're now at this point in time, and it's not been cited either. It's yeah. not been reviewed, not been cited. So uh, they, they they move on. So uh, and as I say. It, it, We've talked about this on a regular basis, and 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 obviously I've got hands in the rock that's probably going to go over something that that, that we've talked about a, a hell of a lot as well on this podcast regularly, and, and I don't want to bore people. But when it comes to head contact, the only way we're going to change professional players' positions of where they hit people with their tackles is if you get sent off for hitting someone in the head with your shoulder, your arm, etc. Yeah. And and you're not going to change that if you know. Oh well, you know I was. I was looking the other way when I put the tackle in, so obviously it's mitigation. You know, it's not going to. Ha- these are the, these sort of things are just going to encourage people to try and argue with the referee about mitigation. Yep. Shoulder to head, any head contact with the shoulder or with another head, it's a it's a red card I, I, unless yeah. it's unless it's an accident. Like the, I think it was the uh, again the Exeter Chiefs Harlequins yeah. game where there was an accident and two heads came together, um, and that's well, the that, well that's it, yeah. Trust the referee to make that decision. That do you know what? If there's head contact, there's head contact, right? And if it's people bouncing into each other, fine, right? We'll try to discourage that. Let's make sure that the body positions are safe. Yeah. But ultimately, it's a contact sport, right? We're not trying to say otherwise. But if you've got someone recklessly putting themselves in a position where they're making deliberate contact with someone. And doing it to the head or to the neck or anything like that, that is a red card and should be a red card. Um, It's just staggering. And we've got uh, Aldo here on uh, YouTube saying they seem to be bowing to pressure from the Australian and New Zealand in the ridiculous 20 minute red card trials. I think that's a fair point. Like that 20 minute thing is absolutely garbage. But we've had the, the, the Southern Hemisphere have got form on this. You know, they've, they've yeah. you know we've had head contacts and they've been mitigated down to yellow, or they've been just been play on, play on. Um, and over the last couple of years, when we, when we've been focusing in the northern hemisphere on head contact, they've been, you know, they've been paying it pretty much, you know, lip service. Um, and then this twenty, 20 minute cards is, it's a joke. Um, and uh, an uh, yeah, it just needs to get in the sea. It needs to get in the sea, absolutely, and the the Southern Hemisphere really have to have a think about how they are approaching uh, player welfare because another couple of incidents, you know, they've they've had players getting minimal bans that are putting people out for six, eight months of the season, yeah. and that's just yeah. not acceptable. Yeah. It's not acceptable, and I, I genuinely think like 
there is an element of where the consequence of, of your actions should then, you know, so it's almost the severity of your actions should almost be taken into account for your ban. Because, yeah. you know, if you're putting someone out for eight, eight months, then I don't think it's fair if you've deliberately, recklessly went in and caused them an injury. I don't think it's fair that you should be able to play in the time that you've put them out. I think that's unacceptable. Yeah, so it's, it's a but really difficult I know that would be terribly, know. terribly difficult to police. Well, the thing is, you just need to look at the at the, at the, at the, the latest bans that have been given out. You know, um, OK, Bundyaki, his um, his uh, defence of a, of a jackal was terrible, reckless, and I don't want to see it in the game. But he's been given eight weeks um, because yep. of his because of his he has got form on that. And then eight um, six was it? No, it's still eight. Oh, I think. It, oh, is it eight? Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think it was mentioned that he could go and do the, the welfare course and get it down to six. Ah, right. Okay, okay. But then you've got Swain, who's put somebody out. Uh, you know, put out the New Zealand player for eight months, six and months. he's got six weeks. You know, so yep. it's, it, it's it, as I say, it's just it's it's a bit of a joke, you know, because that that was pretty. That was really. You know, um, really, really poor. Um, so, anyway, yeah, yeah. And just before we go on to our, our hands, and our, obviously, we, we'll, we'll touch <laughs> on the final bit of the Glasgow game. I want to touch on, uh, you know, we didn't touch on it in the news, but Rory Darge uh, suffered uh, an ankle injury quite early on in the game. Um, it was a very serious injury, it looked like at the time. Uh, turns out, I believe, bro- broken or dislocated ankle and ligament damage. Has had an operation which has been it's said was successful and he'll now start rehab. Um targeting four 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 to six month recovery, um, which would get him back just either just at the tail end of the Six Nations or or just after. Um desperately desperate it's a desperate shame for for the young young player who has been, you know, just Glasgow stand out for the duration of his Glasgow career actually. Yeah, yeah. Um it's it's such a shame to see that. Um but huge opportunity for Tom Gordon who came on to replace uh, Rory Darge, Tom who had a great start to his Glasgow career as well before being just, you know, kinda usurped by by Rory Darge. Yeah, I think uh, he was the he was going to be the new Wonder Boy and then all of a sudden Darge came along and and performed at an incredibly high level. So and and kind of put it into the weeds. I think I think there's a couple of things that have come out of it, and it's like, oh, it sounds terrible to say it because I we're, I'm, I feel really bad for Roy Darge, but Tom Gordon's going to get his game time um, uh, for Glasgow, and and Hamish Watson can sigh a little bit of relief and hopefully get another you know another six months of playing in the playing in that shirt, uh, the seven shirt for Scotland. Um, and not that I'm saying that that Hamish was was going to not get to play in it, but, um, you know, it's, it Darge is enough, is, you know, a, a Darge, Richie, um, Fagerson back row uh, in, a, in a Scotland shirt would be quite a formidable, formidable back row. I, th- you know? I think what you were meaning there was was uh, Watson, Richie uh, um, and um, Dempsey was the back row you were talking about there, Craig. I'm not, I, I'm not here to talk about ageing Australians, um, so <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going to discuss that. The the aging Australian had a magnificent game at the weekend. By the way, had, just as an aside, I I have to say that um, uh, in a Glasgow shirt he is performing incredibly well. Um, what I would, say, in fact, when 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 uh, when all of, all around him are walking to rocks and uh, not putting the performances that performances in that the pay packets uh, should expect uh, or the paymasters should. Expect um, he does show and lead um, very very well. What I will say, however, and I will repeat it again, um, we've got we've got plenty of people that can work in that area. I don't know why. And he also avoided the conversation. He was asked a fairly direct question um, about it, and he said, and he said, no, I'm just concentrating on uh, on playing for Glasgow. And I think that's the right answer. Play his career in a Glasgow answer. shop. We shall see. I'm sure they'll be news in that <laughs> in the, 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 the coming weeks. Uh, right, so let's touch on our crap call off first before we go into... Uh, yes, we are going to... We are giving you hands in the rock, that's right. Um, but let's touch on our crap call off. Craig, would you like to do the crap call off? 
Uh, oh, am I getting the owners? Is that because uh, I, I'm, I'm uh, handing it to you? I know you want this. I know you want well, this. Well, considering I never got the chance to to uh, talk to him and 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 discuss with uh, him the last Glasgow performance, not this one, not the good performance, but the really pretty terrible one <laughs> um, the other week. Uh, but he has called off tonight because apparently the kids baking wasn't good enough at, uh, at you know and he was he is he is having to bake flapjacks tonight this is it yes he has he has called off coming on the rugby podcast because he has a, a and I, he was talking earlier on about making a cafeteria of coffee because he's going to be up all night baking for and, I think it's the the cake McMillan bake thing tomorrow morning. Yes, yeah, yeah, so McMillan. Doing? Yeah, absolutely. But I'm thinking to myself, how long does it take you to make flapjacks? Are they not just like mix together, put some stuff in it, throw it in a pan, flatten it down, and then put it in the oven? I'm pretty sure that's how it how it works. And uh, you know, in worst case scenario, can you know just make some cornflake cakes or something like? Ah, you know, Rice Krispies and a bit of melted chocolate. Boom. Jobs are good. Yeah, yeah. Jobs ah, are absolutely. Good. Even can even, make... even throw in some marshmallows. Exactly. You can make shortbread in about twenty minutes. It's he's, just it's pure show. It is pure show. He's he's clearly he's clearly at it. Like there's there's discussions need to be had about his uh, his 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 well. I think he's still working in the Wilson era. That's all I'm saying. I, I agree. I I agree. He, he he he's incredibly. He's got his hands and his hands on his hips and he's walking back to the rock. He's walking back to the rock. Yeah, yeah. And to be fair, that is true of his rugby actually as well. well so well, I'd rather have his hands on his hips than his hands trying to catch a ball. But that's a <laughs> bravo! Right, <laughs> let's do a bit of this. <laughs> Yes, hello, the 23 people that are still watching. You are getting hands in the rock. Woohoo! We will not be swearing though, we're keeping this PG 13 for the for the kids. Um but yes, we are here for Hands and Rock. It is our Any Other Business section. You're getting a special treat this week. Um, we are going to look at what's got its hands in our ruck. Uh, if you're watching and you want to get a shout out or anything that's got its hands in your ruck, please just pop a comment on the Facebook or YouTube or whatever you're watching on. Uh, and we'll try and pick them out as well as we go. But let's come to you first, Craig. What has got its hands in your ruck? Well, those of you, uh, and, and it's lovely to have hands in the ruck, out in the public domain this week, um, and it's mainly. I'm sorry to the, our Patreon friends, our very, our very um, valuable, you know, our very uh, wonderful Patreon friends um, that were looking for a Patreon uh, uh, um, pod tonight. Unfortunately, it's my fault because I'm not feeling very well. So we brought we brought hands in the rock into into this one today, and and it's great to see everyone getting to listen to it for a change. Um, we have regularly. Talked about our friends down at Exeter Chiefs. And we talk about many different things about some of their um, some of their beliefs regarding um, vaccinations and different things that are out there. Um, some of their choices in garments that they like to wear and noise that they like to make. And there were two rather upsetting things that have come out of Exeter Chiefs this weekend. They've released and launched their, their new logo. And I really, considering the game they played at the weekend, was absolutely fabulous. I want to support the Exeter Chiefs. I want to. I thought this is brilliant. They've got the new, the new logo, and they've you know they've done exactly what I wanted. I didn't mind them keeping the Exeter Chiefs name. I just wanted them to change their logo and stop with their uh, with their um, their speciality songs. And they brought out some lovely ladies with what could I only be described as um, sort of chieftain drums. Now they weren't um, they weren't uh, going towards uh, Imagine Nations or anything like that. First Nation people drums. They were I I took it as they were dressed as sort of. Cornish drums and chieftain drums, and they did a great thing. And I thought this is fabulous. And they've got everyone in the in the uh, in the all the Exeter fans are shouting Exeter, Exeter, and everything like that. And it, it was it was really really good, really pleased. 
I was over the moon. And then next minute, when they start getting under the pump by Harlequins in the second half, the drums are being used for something else. And the old adage comes out, the old song comes out, the beating of the drums and the tomahawk chop is surrounding and played down the, the TV to me from BT Sport. I am absolutely and utterly fed up with certain Exeter Chief fans who are clinging on to this now getting pathetic way of telling us you don't get to tell us what to do and then to bring these drums out and to show look now i can't i, I can't say this that that it was the same people that were um that were drumming that were that were drumming the, the tomahawk chop but it sounded very very similar and i, and I didn't see any other drums in the in, in the in, on the tv it was just disappointing because I want to support Exeter Chiefs. They are a phenomenal team. They've done a great many things within the English Premiership and I thought this saga was over but unfortunately there's still cl certain fans and it is only certain fans are still clinging on to this um, backward way of thinking and it's just disappointing. It was interesting on the BT Sport commentary actually it was mentioned as the team were running out uh, so as you say, you know, you've got the drums beating and they were doing a, the, the Exeter chant and the commentary actually mentioned, uh, and you might hear some of the old songs from the, from for a, from a minority over on the, the other stand, uh, some, of, some of the diehards uh, are still, still prefer the old songs. And it was done in such a, like, I know, I know what they're trying to do at BT Sport. They were trying to almost dismiss it to the point of, that's pathetic. Yeah. We're not going to give that any any sort of <clears throat> indication or any, any sort of airtime. But as you say, once when you were sitting in the second half and you could hear it everywhere, like it's not blatant. And let's be honest, right? I'm obviously from the west of Scotland. I know plenty about things getting heard in stadiums that shouldn't be getting said or sung or uh, chanted. And television picks it up pretty well. Like, you can hear it pretty clearly. So, I, I, I genuinely, I think I think there does need to be more intervention. And, like, I, I, I think, similar to what Glasgow said, you know, it's part of your terms and conditions that you, you are able to attend matches without being, you know, subjected to that sort of stuff. And, like, I think there has to be a discussion down in England where, you know, clubs, I know obviously Wasps were very vocal about it at the time as well, but you know, it's just, it's just not acceptable. And they are, they're doing all the right things, but some idiots, and let's, let's call them oh, what they are, they're gone, idiots. And that's it. Yeah, otherwise he's going to come back. And just when he... Have I got? Oh, is this me? Was it me that went or was it you? I think it was you. I, 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 was didn't have a, I didn't have a warning or anything. I was still here. Oh, right. So, okay. yeah, Sorry. just, I was calling them idiots. Yeah, just, you know, let's let's call them what they are. The, the idiots who just, as you said, you know, can't can't let go. Um, and I'm just disappointed, just... John. I just, I just feel that, that they were turning, a, turning up a page and I was really, I really felt that we, we can go back to celebrating Exeter Chiefs rugby and stop talking about this. Yeah. I was about shall, to swear, but I didn't. Shall, shall we talk <clears> about the, the second disappointing thing from Exeter? Oh, yes. May, may I? Oh, okay. Or you going to, Wait, is no, that no, your, no, or is that your hands in the room? No, I'm disappointed about other things. Please. Okay, okay. So, so my second uh, thing is Hoggy's man, boy. Exactly. Uh, Matt, you've hit the nail <laughs> on the head. Looking like... Um, a uh, Yorkshire Terrier that's in somebody's handbag, um, coming out with his bare, his bare white teeth and his uh, and his his elastic band, and he's looking like Bam Bam um, out of the Flintstones. <laughs> um, listen, it's it's an individual thing, and I'm not I'm I'm only, this is a, just me being a bit jokey the night uh, after a fairly serious one, but. Um, He's turning. I saw a really interesting thing on uh, on on Instagram, and it was comparing him and uh, Jack Noel, 
and it seems like he's he's got the same hairdresser and and uh, as as Jack Noel because it seems that Jack Noel does a hairstyle and Hoggy does it then Jack Jack Noel does another ha- hairstyle and Hoggy does it and then all of a sudden it's gone down the same route so uh, yeah interesting one I I, I just kind of because there's blondes he's got blonde streaks in it as well oh the the <laughs> There, there's blonde streaks. There's like there's it's feathered and deadly. It is it's a magnificent coiffure. Oh, don't it's, get me wrong. I think yeah. when he's got the man for now, I think he's going to be beautiful. Well, as be, as beautiful oh, as what he can be. I, I mean, huge kudos to the the hairdressers of Exeter for that uh, <laughs> for that effort. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> they, put up with, they put up with a lot of stuff down in the, the, the hairdressers' effects that have put, uh, put up with a lot of stuff down in Exeter. They do. Do you know, I'm mo- I'm just most glass- glad now. Obviously, Jack Noel and, and Hogg are keeping them in business, right? But Henry Slade, there's a guy that I'd, I've obviously been very vocal about, Henry Slade, and I think he's a bit of a, a Roman Platt, to be honest. But he's a short back and sides guy. He keeps it real. <laughs> Yeah, he, he, I, he play... I, I think he cuts his own hair, eh? Well, he's he's going to be, isn't he? He's, he's one of those guys, you know. He, he doesn't he doesn't like getting injections, and he doesn't like getting his, he likes to cut his own hair. You know, the next thing he'll be you doing his he... own. You think he does his own tattoos as well? Oh, I, oh, I, hundred oh, yeah. percent. He 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 bought he bought a tattoo gun off Amazon in lockdown and started doodling on himself. Hundred percent. He's, he's he's probably one of those guys that when you're having a beer with him he's, and you talk about his tattoos, he says no, actually I don't go to tattoo parlors. I get a, I get, a, um, I get someone from a from such and such a place that that, that, that does it old style with a tappy with a nail and a bit of wood and <laughs> absolutely yeah. <He's, laughs> you just see him sitting there with these these you know if if he if he could grow one he's probably would would have a beard and likes to drink expensive coffee. Oh, he hundred he a hundred percent does. Henry Slade is hipster's paradise. Um, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, no, yeah, Hoggy's man fun it. is quite something. Um, <laughs> just I uh, also Hoggy being Hoggy. Um, came on, great, great to see him back from injury. To be fair, but came on and classic Hoggy overplayed, done done Hoggy stuff, and then nearly butchered the winning pass uh, on a two on one. Um, so you know, done hoggy things. Well, he, every, he, he every did, but luckily, calling. yeah. Well, luckily, um, uh, the, the referee um, is uh, was 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 on a mission to let Exeter win that weekend because because uh, he, he did butcher the pass. Oh. It was a forward pass. <laughs> but anyway, that was a forward story. pass. Yeah. Every Scotland fan knew he was going to show and go there. Like nobody, nobody was like he's going to pass this. Oh, he's up. I was amazed. I was amazed Anyhow. he actually passed it. Yeah. Oh, no, I mean, because yeah. he was very old. Like, he'd, he'd, yeah. he'd made a mess of it. Anyway, right. So, yeah, um, my hands are up. I'm going to go back to corporate podcasts. And we're going to have a, wee, a, a final wee chat about. Um, so, bless the Glasgow Warriors podcast. The official Glasgow Warriors podcast is the, the right way entitled it it's on its sep- second episode and i'm not one for slamming things in the early years you know it's it's great to hear some content however the format the the the, the squad cast as it is called oh. uh, is to, oh i know i know right oh. <sighs> that's tight right the format of squad cast is to get a current player uh, from the squad to come on um, and in week one, there was only one player, but uh, Murphy Walker done such a good job that he got to come back and was co-host this week, uh, which does make me wonder what he's doing with the rest of his rest of his week. But he was co-host, and they pick questions that have been submitted out of a hat, and then the player in question then answers said questions. And would you would you care to take a guess, Craig? What sort of questions get asked? Bear in mind, official SRU <sighs> sanctioned podcast. Oh, I don't want. I don't. I don't even want. How are you find? How are you settling in with with with, with Franco Smith? Oh, he's fantastic. He's you know, he's a great. Franco man. gets a mention now and then, right? Yep. Yeah. And um, take, uh, some of the book fans and ticket prices. No. no. Oh, that that's funny. That doesn't get mentioned. No, 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 okay. no. no it's more a. Uh, 
which uh, which which warrior would you like to lead a search party to find you? Which uh, what who who's 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 the best? Um, <laughs> Who's who's got the best hair? Uh, who would be the hair? Who makes the best coffee? It's all that absolute garbage that you know when you're in the build up to a big tournament and you get the like the content which is like oh here's the player who who snores the loudest in camp? Who would you not room with? Who's the best trainer? Who makes the most noise in the park? It's just garbage. We kind of want to know about these people as players and as as people. We don't want to know about the scripted nonsense that the SRU are having you say. So, and the problem with episode two, if you've happened to listen to it, um, again, I'm sorry you went through that. It's Ollie Smith who's on it. Now, I love Ollie Smith with all of my being. I think he's a fabulous player. A podcaster he is not. He has (laughs) about as much enthusiasm for podcasting as I have enthusiasm for Henry Slade. It is. It's not. It's not good. Um, and Murphy Walker's not exactly enthusiastic. And the host is doing his best, and he's trying to drag answers out of the boys. But it is like it's. It's a wee bit like, oh, I can't believe I'm having to do me. And there's a funny moment actually in the second episode where Ollie Smith, they go right time for the next question, and Ollie Smith goes, oh, another question. I thought we were done. <laughs> and he does it in a, it's not in a joking way, in a like, ha ha ha, yeah, hey, it's in a, oh, for F sake, can't believe I'm still doing this. Oh, not good. Would you, would you good. believe I used to listen to the Glasgow Warriors podcast when it was, uh, it was way back? And actually, one of my favourite, and yes, all of you will groan and moan when I say because of Ryan two, Wilson. Uh, five legends, but. Yeah, you should try him, Wilson. Uh, George Horn was on with uh, with Pete Aye. when they were both. That was a great playing. episode. And it was, that was a, a great episode. It was a great episode, and they actually asked decent questions and they answered them. Yeah, and that's they talk, and and, and if about it, their growing up and stuff, didn't they as well? And like, yeah, absolutely. That was great. And obviously talked about the Howard Five, which is obviously oh, absolutely, you know. yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, I think I think it's one of those situations. I think I think we need to and and I, and if the powers that be are listening and checking up that we're not slagging them off, um, which we are, which well, you are. I'm I'm just I'm just being the usual <laughs> the usual brown noser to the SRU that I that I get accused about. Being. Hey, um, if you're listening, to SRU, there are podcasts out there. And you need to loosen the reins a little bit and let some of us talk to some of the players and the coaches because we won't be nasty. We're not the sort of people that are going to be interviewing Liz, Liz Truss and uh, and uh, pulling her apart and, and wondering what the hell is going on in her head. We just want to know some more information from the players and actually get to know them a little bit rather than just hear the, the written down jargon that, that, that they've been pre- presented with to, to, to chunt her out every single time. We want to know our boys. We're not... You know, we want to know what they're like, what they're like, and we want to know the Scottish women. We want to know these players. We want to get to know them more. You know, and and, and that's absolutely right. So we we will be back uh, next time out. We will be looking very much forward to the, the Scotland Women's uh, Rugby World Cup uh, campaign. We'll be looking at another round of the URC. We'll be having a probably lots of chat about AGMs, we'll be having chats about all sorts of stuff, we'll have to do two hours next week Well we need to find out about about whether Johnny's baking has been a success Well, do you know what, knowing Johnny his baking will be a success but that's just because he's very he's a very focused individual and uh, I'm I'm sure sure his baking will go down a a treat uh, tomorrow but the uh, thing is, though, John, though, is he's he's flapjacks. He'll take a flapjack, and he'll only be able to, he'll only be able to finish a quarter of it. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah. Everybody <laughs> else will be everybody else will be well finished the flapjacks. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that was me, pal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't look like a guy who wouldn't finish a flapjack. No, uh, you're no, mate. No, so no. yeah, we we we. We will be back next week. Um, it's been a thank you, Craig, for powering through tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm glad we didn't uh, didn't have to call off. You know, the days of calling off rugby over in Glasgow. Hopefully, is uh, you know when we got the 
when we got the new turf, we, we stopped calling off matches. So I'm glad that you've been able to power through tonight. And uh, I think uh, we'll be back next week to kind of tie up some of the loose ends. Uh, Glasgow are brilliant. Edinburgh were no too bad at all. It's looking like a great season all of a sudden. There is hope coming in, Scottish rugby fans. This is not good. This is not where we want to be, guys. So we'll need to sort this out next week. But for now, it is goodbye from me and goodbye from Craig. See you all later. It's the hope that kills you.